My name is Brenda DeWinter. I haven't really seen any improvement as far as upswing in Dayton. I think Dayton sucks right now. In 1997, I got hired through General Motors. They said, oh, you know, you quit your job, you, you know, you have a career for life, blah, 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 you know, the same story. And of course, you believe them because you're going to be making good money. So I went to work for General Motors and started out at $10 an hour, which back then was good money. And when I left there, I was making about 17 when I got laid off in 2001. They told us about two months beforehand that, you know, they were laying us off. And uh, they did buyouts. Certain groups would get offered money to leave, and then the next group might not. I didn't get offered to the buyout. What do you do when you're, you're used to running machines bigger than a house? Right after I got laid off, I had a heart attack. So I ended up collecting unemployment for a while, and then I, uh, one of the ladies that I went to church with, she came across the position at the base, contracted through the base, and she told me about it, so I went and applied. The way it was explained to me is I would just be checking IDs to come into the base. Simple. It was cool. You know, I, I, I just had a quadruple bypass, so I, you know, that, hey, I can do that. Little did I know, as time went on, it would transition into more. We work with the uh, security forces, uh, which is base police, and we help them with uh, situations that happen. The Air Force contracted to have civilian guards after 9-11 because everyone was being deployed. So they didn't have enough military to cover both situations. Uh, the government said, okay, we're going to hire people to come in and um, take care of the bases while our people are out taking care of America. Well, now, now that the war is over, so they say, <laughs> they're bringing people back, and of course, that's going to cause a transition. So we'll be we'll be leaving there in September. Most of us have been there for seven years, and we've known this. I mean, it's, it's a contract, so every year it has to be renewed. Every year there's a possibility you could lose your job. So it was not shocking. Nobody likes to look for a job. Nobody likes to leave a job. You know, how many, how many places are going to want to hire a 60-year-old security guard a and a female? When I was working at General Motors, it was a good life. You know, it made I made good money. I made decent money at that time. Not as much as I'm making now, but, you know, it was a good life. And then I lucked into this job, and here I am again. I'm making good money, but it's going away again. They're not offering us anything other than to leave on the 29th. N no benefits, no incentives. It's pretty much going to be, okay, we got these people hired. Ta -ta, see ya. It's hard because you, you have to worry about your everyday things, you know. Just because I get laid off, it doesn't mean my house payment stops or my car payment stops. or You can't sit and constantly worry about it because it's going to make you crazy. Then nobody's going to want to hire you because you're crazy. <laughs> but no, seriously, though, you, you, you have to turn it over to your higher power. I don't, some people don't want to call it God. You know, whatever that higher power is, you have to turn it over to. So I'm looking, I'm looking at different things. I'm looking at retraining, forklift driving, something like that, because I'm, in, I'm not into like boutiques and stuff like that. So <laughs> just trying to get, get my head together to decide what I want to do and how to go about it. It may take some time, but you know. I know what I can do and what I can't do. Even with my physical problems, I know that, that I'm still capable and more than willing mentally. I, I love a challenge, so that's what keeps me going. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps and carry on.